The Injil yeah, is the, the eyewitness account. Was revealed from the Father to the Son? No, we believe it was revealed through men, inspired through the Holy Spirit. I know, I know, exactly. Yeah. So okay. what she's saying right. is, do you believe that it came? We don't believe it came like as a literal book. No, we don't believe it's a book. It's not, it's not, it's not so the it's actual it's word it's of, God, of, of God, of Allah. Of, so we, so it's not the actual word of Allah. So why would you believe that? We believe that as Jesus is the word of Allah, but, but, the word but, of God. Okay. But so, that's the yeah. claim. I mean, the, 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 the answer the to that is the, 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 the same book. reason. Yeah. Yeah. The book is yeah. the account of Matthew, the word of God. In which mm -hmm. right? So word, is, what, in Matthew is in which right? Then they should... If you wrote book, brother, the yeah. Yeah. is yours. Yeah. And I took it, and I add yeah. it, and take it out. They yeah. are okay, yeah. you're going to make me pay uh, fine, right? Because some people call trademark, written, yeah. right? It should be still your book. Well, no, sure. should, yeah, you have the original. No, 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 so what is your book? And I took it, and I wrote it again. This one, sir, for example, this one. And I add it and take it out. Still, this is your book? You're saying they contradict? No. Are you saying that's a problem? Do you know in Surah An Nisa, Ayah 82, it says that if there was many contradictions, it would be not from Allah, not singular, many. In your Quran, it actually says that certain uh, contradictions are acceptable, because it says that if it were not from Allah, uh, Allah, the Quran, there would be many contradictions, not singular, not just a contradiction, many. That's not what your Quran says. That's not what your Quran says. But you're, you're going outside your Quran now. Your Quran says actually, if there's a lot of contradictions, that's a problem. But if there's just a few, that's okay. God does not reveal a book. Surah Nisa, Ayah 82. Shall we read it? Yeah, let's read it. Uh, so this is why I, I don't think contradictions is really a valid thing for Muslims to be saying is an issue. Because in their own faith, the Quran affirms that it's totally fine for that to be uh, to be to have contradictions. So I'm bringing up Surah An Nisa, Ayah 82. Can you ask a question? Is there any easy way for Muslims to find out? Just answer their comments. He was alive, right? Jesus, the Son. He was alive. For they were. Um, do they not ponder the recital? For had it been uh, from any other than Allah, yep. they would have found it much discrepant. So right. it's a, 
do they not ponder about the Quran? Had it been from any other than Allah, they would surely have found it much inconsistent in it much inconsistency. Yeah. Th that means that if it's from Allah, yeah. then there shouldn't be any any consistency. No, it just means that it should only be a few. It shouldn't be and shouldn't be. That's not what it says though, is it? That's so what was the surah was it they're talking about here that was that word in Arabic yeah. translated means much and it's after so the word contradiction. So contradiction presence, much so 481 so they're talking about their faith their presence we obey but they leave your presence apart to them meets by night to plan against you have said Allah takes them to all their parts so that they will know who they trust in Allah and they cannot ponder about the Quran had it, had it been from any other than Allah they would surely have found it in it much inconsistency right so much so not any so the, much so the, so, but, but what so, so when you say, oh, I have issues with the Bible because it contradicts, well, that's not actually enough. You need to find a lot of contradictions, or at least there many. Are a lot of ma there are a lot of contradictions in the Bible. Well, I think there's a lot of many contradictions in the Quran. What do you want me to call it? Like what? Like, well, no, no, no. I think, actually, I'll give, okay. So my biggest issue with the Quran in terms of contradictions is the fact that it affirms the Injil and the Torah. It affirms the Injil and the Torah. Okay, but doesn't the Injil say that the Messiah was crucified? And doesn't the Quran in Surah Nisa, Ayah 157, say no, it wasn't? The thing is, with the Injil, over time, it has been, it has been changed. You cannot really find the real Injil now. Okay, so if you think the Injil has been changed, was it changed before Muhammad or after Muhammad? In actuality, um, it's a gossip. So it was changed from, uh, brother, uh, from what I know, it was changed during the Roman Empire. Can I answer that? Okay, during the Roman Empire. So that's before no, Muhammad. So Muhammad came and then he affirmed a Injil and told the Christians to judge by the Injil. Yeah. Even though it's corrupted. The word. You don't want me to use the word? I'm going to use the word no. word. So it was it does, not corrupted? It does, it does or? say in the Quran then yeah. that it was corrupted. Can you show me a verse? I'm just going to jump to the end, but there is no verse that says the angel was corrupted. The closest you're going to find is a verse that says that people cha they, they changed their writings of the scriptures with their own hands and they sold it for a profit. They, they Basically, they wrote their own versions of it. Which, sure, I think many people probably have over history wrote their own versions of things. But the issue is, is that's not corrupting the angel. Like, if I, if I write a Quran and I change words, have I corrupted the Quran? I have. Really? Yeah, but you still have the Quran, right? There are Muslims that have it memorized. There are, right, so I haven't actually corrupted the Quran, not the word of Allah. Right. If I change, if I make my own version and I write my own words, I am corrupting that version of it, but I'm not corrupting the actual Quran, right? Because the Quran is the speech of Allah. And Allah says he will protect his words. But then you are was alive. that particular After 300 years. Sure, I am, right. But it's not the same as saying the whole thing. Like, I haven't corrupted the whole Quran, have I? Does that make sense? Like, I've only corrupted my version of it. I've only written this falsehood and said it's the Quran. When really, it's not the Quran. It's just me writing things that look like the Quran, but I change the words. That makes sense? So likewise, uh, I think they're the same with the Injil. I don't think you can say the Injil has been corrupted before Muhammad, because Muhammad came and he affirmed the Injil. In Surah Maida Ayah 47, for example. And he affirmed the Torah in Surah Maida Ayah 43. In fact, Muhammad is actually told, um, some Jews come up to Muhammad and they say, can you give judgments for us? And Muhammad is told uh, through recitation in the Quran by Jibreel not to give judgments to the Jews because they have the Torah with them. So the only way that would work is if there was actually a Torah there that the Jews had that was authentic and the Jews are supposed to follow. In Surah Baqarah in verse 85, uh, uh, Allah actually says, why is it that these Jews are being hypocrites because they follow one verse from the Torah, which is to ransom Jews back into the uh, captive, they ransom them back, and then they, they don't follow another verse that says that you're not supposed to kill other Jews. Because in the, in the context, there are Jewish tribes that are aligning with the Arab tribes, and they're fighting against each other when Jews aren't supposed to do that. So basically, Allah is saying in this verse, which is uh, Surah 2, Ayah 85, why are you following one verse, you're answering them, which is good, but you're killing each other, which is going against another verse. Why aren't you following the scripture as a whole? But to follow the scripture as a whole, they would have to have the Torah, right? How can Allah tell the Jews to follow the Torah if they ha don't have the Torah, they only have a corrupted version of it? Does that make sense? Why? That's why he revealed the Quran because he said that these. Okay, as an English. That's well, why he revealed, he revealed, he revealed the new book because these are corrupt. Well, remember that he he affirmed the judgments, right? 
So, in Surah al 53, he affirms the judgments in the Torah that the Jews had. The, the judgments are like the laws, and there are 613 laws in the, in the Torah. So, in, a, in effect, he said, yeah, they're all good, which is problematic because some of those, like Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, say that uh, Adonai, the Lord of the Jews, is a father. But the Quran says, no, he's not a father. But if the Quran says Allah is the father to no one, then how is he saying these judgments are fine and the Jews should follow them and Muhammad shouldn't give judgment? You see what I mean? It's kind of weird. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time looking at this. <laughs> it's a little hobby of mine. But. So I'm a Christian. Yeah, yeah. So did you, I, assume, I think I heard someone say you converted to Islam. When did you convert, if you don't mind me asking? Oh wow, yeah, yeah. Um, I did not really, I was with the Christian community. Yeah. Um, our whole family converted when I was six years old, but I really did not practice it until when I came here to England. Oh, okay, okay. It's because I was, I was surrounded with Christians, but what I find in the Bible is that if there's a lot of inconsistency and there are a lot of like um, questions that only Quran answers. Um, Do you have an example, maybe? Like, I have a list. Okay. So I, I don't really want to, you know, talk about it first. All right. Okay. Well, can I just leave you with just one thing? Yeah. yeah and then maybe you can go home and look up what I've told you about. So you follow the Bible. So you still follow the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I follow the Bible, Bible and Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So from my point of view, so Allah doesn't love me, right? Does Allah love me? Because in the Quran, I think I could be wrong, but it might be Surah Al Imran, Ayah 33, it makes it clear that Allah does not love the disbelievers. And you, so, how do you define a disbelieving? Well, the Quran seems, I mean, so for example, uh, I believe, as Christians do, that God is triune, that there is one God, but he is three persons. So the Quran seems to be referring to that and saying, oh, well, it gets it wrong, by the way. We, we, yeah. But anyway, it, it seems to be saying that if you believe that God is triune, then you are wrong. You're a disbeliever. That's that's like shirk. That's one of the worst things you could do. So, uh, okay, so your question is you don't think that Allah loves you because you're a disbeliever. It seems to be that way, yeah. In the verse, can we, can we... Let me try and bring it up as well. Um, so it's Surah Al Imran, so Surah 3, Ayah 32. It says, uh, Obey Allah and the Messenger, but if you turn away, then indeed Allah does not love the disbelievers. Does not like the disbelievers. Yeah, there are different translations. So there are different, different translations. Um, so if, if I go on Quran.com and I just tap the Arabic, for that particular word it says love. Yeah, so there are different, um, different, you know, so different to my, so love or like. Yeah. Um, obviously we're not Arabic speakers, but, sure. but obviously God does not like, or does not love the disbelievers. Right, yeah. 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 Well that to me is, I, I mean, compared to the Christian message, God loves everyone. And he calls you, and he calls me, and he calls this guy here, and that guy there, you know, all the same. So that's why you believe, so, so you believe in this new Christianity because that's... Say again, sorry? God, God says God, God loves everyone. I think that God is the ultimate source of good. Okay. And I think that outflows in the form of love. Yeah. And he loves those whom he made. Okay. Now that doesn't mean he condones sin. I think he hates sin, because God does hate things. He hates sin. But he is ultimately... Loving, yeah. What is loving? Yeah, but the issue that I have is, if Allah doesn't love me as someone who considers himself sincere and generally tries to find truth, yeah. then it seems kind of like he's sort of cutting me off from the beginning. Well, I don't think so, because it, yeah, do you want me because it's because if you're, yeah. if you're consistently trying to find truth, Allah mm. also says that Allah loves you when you're consistently trying to find truth. In the Quran, it also says that it's not just only Muslims who are going to be saved; it's also the Christians. 
the Jews, there are the believers who are Christians, Jews, and also the Sabians. We don't know what the Sabians are, but I would assume in the, in, you know, they, 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 there are, um, there are, uh, there, uh, there are things that I read that the Sabians are the sun worshippers. So basically, some of them are, like, we could categorize them as pagans. Do you think... So these, these people, if they are doing good, then they will also be saved. It, but in Christianity, mm. it only says that you will be saved mm. only if you if you believe that Jesus is God. Well, that's right? what. Well, that's yeah. One of the things you so have to that, believe. Yeah. So that means that in your in your book in your yeah. belief, then that means that Je God doesn't love me as well. No, we because, we, because we wouldn't I, say that. Not accepted oh, Jesus. By all means, but we don't say that love is um, like conditional in any sense. He loves you regardless. It's just that whether you want to spend time with eternity with the Lord or you don't is up to you. So, in effect, you, you have like a... the same in Islam. Well, no, no. Uh, Allah makes it clear he does not love the disbelievers. But it doesn't, make, it doesn't say that it doesn't say that you cannot go to heaven. Oh, if I, if I, if I, if I repented and became a Muslim, then potentially I could go to heaven if Allah decides what, what to do that. Love, but, what is well, love? Well, love is to desire something for what it is. Like, love is if, if, if God created human beings, then surely he created something in us of value, right? Something what? A value. A value, yeah. Right. But if I if Allah says, well actually I don't either like you or love you because you're a disbeliever, yeah. he really doesn't want anything to do with me. No, but 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 then he also said in the Quran, so like what I said, okay? Yeah. It's, he, he does say that he doesn't like a disbeliever. Right. But he doesn't say that you're not going to be saved if you are a disbeliever. Unlike in Christianity, you say that you are not going to be saved if you if you do not believe that Jesus is God. Right? Right. But that's not true in the Quran. In the Quran it says the Jews, the Sabians, the Christians, that you you do not do do not be afraid, you will be saved as long as you know, as long as you do good. But the problem so, the problem yeah, with that though is that the Jews the Jews say, even today, uh, Joseph and other Jews can confirm yeah. that they say that the, the Lord Adonai or Hashem for them is, is a father, a spiritual father to the Jews. So, okay. uh, Hashem means the name, it's what we're building. Oh, okay. that, so, the, yeah. so they can't be saved, right? Because that goes against the Quran? No, because, because, the, uh, because from, from the, the God of Jews is also our God. Hashem, it, they're, just this, they're just not the same, you know, they're just not the same name. So no, in the Bible, right. Hebrew of uh, Hebrew name of Allah is Elohim. Sure. Right. So well, we have, uh, okay. We, we pray to the same God the Father. Well, well, you, you just believe in the God the Father. Just to just to add some of that, Elohim is like it's like um like a generic term Elohim. for God basically. Yeah. So Elohim. Yeah. Allah, it's also generic. It's a, right. It's fine. A, but the Jew, the Jews also Elohim. believe that God has a name. Yeah. So. That, well, but Allah, Allah doesn't so have Allah, a name. Allah has ninety-nine names. Y yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. He has Names, but none of them are the Tetragrammaton, right? None of them are yod Hey vav Hey, which is what the Jews believe his name is. Yeah, so those are just names, okay? Well, that's but his name. No, that's his, his, his actual name that yeah. he reveals to Moses. Okay. Yeah, so, so I mean, what I'm trying yeah, to say is that... Those are just different names, well, you know? But, but, but they, are, mm. they, are, they, are, they believe in one God. The concept is, it's a right. monotheist religion. They believe right. in one God. Yeah. They, they do not believe in other gods. They believe right. in, the, in one creator, which yeah. we believe as well. Yeah. So they believe in uh, the, um, the God of Abraham, right. which is our God as well. And that's why we say Islam is the, did not start with, with Muhammad. Right. Islam means, Islam means um, believing in one God, right? Well, it means so, submission. It means submission, right? Yeah, that's, that's what it actually means. In one God. Yeah, so, submission to one God. Yeah. Well, it means submit to the will of Allah, Allah. right? Yeah. It, it covers yeah. a lot of things, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty broad. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, to me, like, I don't know, it, it just seems clear that the, the Jews don't believe what Muslims believe. Like, for example, Allah makes it clear those who associate partners with him commit shirk. It even says in Surah 48, Ayah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Surah 48, Ayah 33, it says, I think it's that verse, I need to check, but it says, um, uh, hypothetically, if God did have a son, Muhammad is instructed to be the first to worship them. Sorry? If, if, if God, Allah, hypothetically had a son, yeah. Muhammad is instructed to be the first of, their, of the, the ones who worship the son. Muhammad is the first. Yeah, should we, should we look at it? Yeah. Because in their view, anyone who says that God has a son is committing shirk. Yeah. But the Jews think God has sons, the yeah. Jewish people. So the Jews are committing shirk. And if you die in shirk, you don't get to Jenna. So, 
So likewise, for, for me as a Christian, and Christians, like, unless you're heretical, you believe that God is triune. But it seems as if the Quran explicitly condemns that. So God is Sorry, one. Sorry, yeah. language. So, uh, oh, that's fine. So we believe as Christians that God is triune. So He's one. Oh, but you mean through. Trin trin uh, yeah, yeah, tri yeah. That's what we call it. So we, we say the triune God. Okay. Yeah. So there is only one God, and we reject any like talk of any other gods because there is only one God. Yeah. And that God has revealed themselves to be multi-personal. Yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that, that's what we think. Um, but the Quran seems to be addressing that in some sense. Again, it, it doesn't quite get it right, but it addresses us enough to know that's what we're, we're being mentioned. And it says, well, you guys, you're committing shirk. So that means that all the Christians are not in that group that are going to Jenna. Allah knows what's in your heart, right? So there are Christians who right. think, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is my personal belief. Yeah. Sure. Um, there are Christians who think like you. That the Holy Trinity is one God. Yeah. yeah. This, this this is like all Christians, by the way. This is mainstream yes, Christianity. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it means you, you believe that there is only one God. And that you believe that in your heart. Yeah. Yeah, and you you do good. And that's and and to me that's you know it's it's Allah knows what's in your heart, like what your intentions are. He knows it. That's right. In the Quran as well. So, ah, but but he also makes it clear that there are certain things that won't be forgiven, like shirk yes, is unforgiven. In the, in, the, in the Bible, it says right. that as well. Right. That there are things that are not, not that you cannot forgive. Right, right. Yes. Yeah? But the issue is, is that the way the Quran words it, it blanket covers all mainstream Christians, and it blanket covers all rabbinic Jews, because they believe that God is a father to them, a spiritual father, that's, which is sure. That's, that's, that's correct. We're yeah, rabbinic Jews. Sorry, yeah, that's, okay, that's, that's incorrect. Right. No, the way you're describing it is incorrect. Well, what would I say is incorrect? When you say when you say God is a father. Do you mean he's the biological father? No. So, I never said biological father. Exactly. So, okay, so, so when, we say, when we say yeah. in shirk, if you say God has a biological son, that no, is no, shirk. No, no. The Quran doesn't say biological son. The Quran says if you ascribe a son to Allah, no, that is shirk. Hang on a second. The Quran is written in Arabic. Okay. You know, it's also Arabic. been translated. Everyone reads Arabic. It just says father. Right? Yeah. It says father. Yeah. It doesn't say spiritual father. It actually says father. But the Christians have never believed that, like, like the, the Trinity is no, different Trinity persons is and one has eternally no, existed no, no. in flesh. No one is. No. First, you're talking about biological father. So do we establish that? Yeah, but you God talked is, about biological yeah, father. I never said that. So, so can we yeah. establish that God is not a biological father? Yeah, but no one. Yeah, of course, no Good. one says that. Fantastic. The Jews don't say that. Christians don't say that. No. The Quran doesn't say that. No. Right, just, okay, so yeah, it is spiritual not then, isn't it? To any son. Yes, in, in, it's not okay. a biological sense, so it's a spiritual sense. Fantastic. So, Thank so that's established. Okay. So we're in agreement right. on that side. Okay. Now let's go to can we, is, is Father One. Wait, wait, can I have resume my conversation with this lady? We're having a conversation. I, I, I addressed your point. Hey, peace be with you, brother. How are you? So, I mean, yeah, th these are the reasons why I would I would say, yeah, Islam is, is wrong. Islam is false. It affirms something it doesn't understand. It affirms an NGO that it doesn't know. It informs the Torah that he doesn't know. He said yeah. anything new. <laughs> so it's still the end of the hadith. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about hadith? No, no, it's a, so move on to many different the things. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Melissa. Melissa, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, well, God bless you. I'll be praying for you. Oh, God bless. Cool. And you read the Quran. Hey, I've read the Quran. I've read the Quran. I've read the Bible. Arabic. How you read? I, oh, oh, I can only read it in Arabic. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. It, Islam is not for people like me, you know? It's not for people who are not Arabs. <laughs> well, non-Arabs is what I mean. Yeah, but it is Arab. Jesus wasn't Arab. Yeah, so are the words in the Quran of a visa? Are the words in the Quran of Isa? Because the Quran, the Quran copies Isa, right? It mentions his words. Yeah? So there are words... So it's not mentioned that he's a father. No, no. Are Isa's words in the Quran? Words of Quran, no. Isa's words are not in the Quran. No, it's not words of Quran. No, no, Isa, when Isa spoke. Okay, but are they of what Isa spoke? No. no. He's saying what he said. I don't think you're understanding. You're, you're, either you're not understanding me. How he spoke in the Quran? Okay, so Amida, Ayah 116, it literally quotes Jesus there. You know that, right? So obviously it contains Jesus' words, right? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, there it is, the Quran. 
Wait, wait. I'm recall when Allah said, Oh Jesus, son of Mary. Wait, wait, listen, listen, listen. Stop for you. I forgot. Wait, wait, listen, listen. I'm quoting the Quran. Not in Arabic. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, because I don't like to be touched. Okay, let me let me just let me just quote this first to you. Which which ayah? So this is Surah Al Maida, ayah 116. Yeah, so this is Surah Al Maida, ayah 116. You translate in language. I'll read it for you. There you are. الله يا عيسى ابن مريم ده سنجات من داي أوكي أوكي أنت قلت للناس أيوة اتخذوني أمي لهين من دون الله أوكي وإذ قال أوكي قال so is this quoting so wait wait when it gets the bit where Jesus replies is that quoting Jesus son of Mary no it says عيسى not Jesus Jesus is Greek okay he's Isa then when it quotes when it quotes Isa is not his real name Isa Isa is not Oh, so you changed it. You changed Yesu. it. You changed it. You changed it. So, so Arabic is so not his real name. Jesus. That's fine then. Yesu, Yesu. Jesus is a transliteration of his name, for sure. Right. Right. It quotes him here. It quotes him here. Okay. okay. So this is quoting Jesus, yeah? No. Or Isa? No. Quoting Isa. He said he will. The second coming in your language. No, he said he said. Second coming. He said. In second coming. It's talking about the past tense. No. It says I recall when Allah said, "Oh Jesus, Son of Mary, did you say to mankind?" And then he would say this. No, this is the wrong one. Okay. It's not my language. It's my language. Right. All right. That's fine. He says. But my point is. Okay. In the future tense. In the future tense. It, it doesn't matter the name. In the future, in the future, in the future, in the future tense, it quotes Jesus. It quotes Jesus. It quotes Jesus, right? Did Jesus speak Arabic? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Did Jesus speak Arabic? Yeah, maybe. What? Maybe. Well, Jesus speak Arabic. What? Maybe. Uh, maybe. They believe maybe. They should, uh, what? I think you speak and he said no. I said the, maybe. Uh, other, uh, oh, you should did Jesus? Did Jesus what? speak Greek? Probably, yeah. Oh, some, some various. And you, are you ignore my maybe? Huh? Did Jesus speak Greek? No. He said maybe. No. Wait, what? Really? What language did Jesus speak? Oh, who's a Christian here? Did Jesus speak Hebrew? What? Oh, the Christian. Yeah. Oh, brother, I trust that young man. Did Jesus speak Hebrew or Greek? Are they going to help the people as a no Arabic language? So probable. So when he asked me about Arabic, he laughed. Why he laughed? Semitic languages. What are they? Who said that? Oh, you have Syriac, you have Hebrew. Yeah, I think Arabic. Exactly. If you want to know the Torah, there might be more than that. Actually, yeah, you should. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 So then, okay. 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 I know, but I mean, the Muslims are so strong as you become. You know that he lived in a Roman-occupied area that had been Romanized for 400 years. So he probably spoke some Greek. Why, why did the, wait, wait, is there Dead Sea Scrolls? What languages were they found in? The Dead Sea Scrolls, you know about those? It doesn't matter if you believe in Islam from your heart. The Dead Sea Scrolls were the, are the earliest manuscripts we have of the Old Testament. Do you know what languages they were in? No, 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 no. Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. They represent themselves. Yeah. Do you know when they were written? They were written 300 years before Christ. If he's wrong, I'm not going to judge Christianity. I can't talk about it. Mean. Okay, all right, fine. But trust me, the, most scholars accept you probably knew some Greek. Because it was a common language spoke them. I'm from other parts of the world. All right, so I just finished having a really nice, honest, sincere conversation with a Muslimah. Which, to be honest with you, is kind of rare these days. It's really hard to have sincere conversations a lot of the time here at Speaker's Corner. But we had one and it was great. And what I really appreciate was that she said to me that she thinks that there are these issues in the New Testament and the Old Testament. She was saying how they contradict and that's why she can't believe it. But I pointed out to her that in her own Quran, in Surah Nisa, Ayah 82, it says that if this was not from Allah, it would have many contradictions, plural. So in other words, Allah has a baked in threshold for contradictions that he'll allow. And only when you go past that threshold does it become a problem. That, I think, is a really bizarre bizarre thing you can find in the Quran. And it demonstrates that contradictions aren't an issue for Allah. It's only when you read so many that it becomes a problem for Allah. So I asked her to be consistent and to think really deeply about what that would mean if Allah is okay with many contradictions of the Quran. And she didn't know that. And we went through the Arabic and she learned some I hope. What was interesting is that I told her that the Quran affirms the Injil, and it does. Surah Al-Maida Ayah 47, for example. Surah Al-Maida Ayah 68 as well. 
It talks about how you should judge by the gospel. But who's Muhammad talking to? He's talking to Christians of that day, supposedly, and he is saying that it is valid to judge by what they had with them. And how do we know it's what they had with them? Surah 7, Ayah 157 talks about the Torah and the gospel that they had with them. And for that reason, we know that it, the Quran affirms the Injil and the Torah that we have today. And I think for that reason, the Quran is false, evidently. There really isn't much to say about that. The Quran affirms our own scriptures. It affirms our Torah, it affirms our uh, Zabor, it affirms our Gospels. And for that reason, ladies and gentlemen, you should reject Islam and you should embrace Christianity. Turn towards Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth and the life and no one comes uh, to the Father except through him. God bless you all. Have a great day. Take care.